friends, it's Living Young Country Girl, and I'm going to be sharing with you guys one of our homeschool curriculums that we are using this year. So we have had a switch in the middle of the school year, so after the first semester, um, it just felt like what we were using, it was good, it just wasn't right for us. Um, there were just a couple different reasons. Part of it was it started getting kind of repetitive, and I was finding that they were kind of, you know, not enjoying it as much so we decided to switch some things up my daughter is still doing if you saw my curriculum review at the beginning of the school year um she is still doing teaching textbooks she loves her teaching textbooks switched on schoolhouse i don't know if it was just us or um our program or what but that thing was so complicated to figure out and even once i figured it out it was such a pain to grade and to work through i really thought it was gonna be a lot more simple like how teaching textbooks is however it was not it was just ridiculous so um, I we spent more time like frustrated trying to figure things out working on it in the computer and trying to figure it out and again like I said I bought the curriculum used but I bought an, an initial setup CD from switched on schoolhouse brand new so I don't know where the issue was but we just were not having much luck with it um and she just wasn't she she was getting stuff out of it it just more often than not, I would have to spend probably 20 minutes every day trying to get her lessons to work and to correlate and do what I needed them to do. Um, we don't do a traditional school year. We don't do a traditional school week. We don't do traditional school times. And so just trying to set that much up was really complicated. So it was just becoming more frustration than what we felt was worth. So we decided to switch that. Um, my son was doing the Alpha um, Matthew C., and it was great. He learned a lot. And I'm not going to give up on that program. Um, I think definitely when it comes to, you know, moving into new lessons and stuff, it would be really helpful. Um, but I also know that there's a couple of gaps in there as far as money and um, uh, time and things like that that they don't really cover. So we are still doing Matthew C., but we're also supplementing with a couple other apps and programs that kind of go over reviewing of, of addition and subtraction, as well as are introducing time and other elements that aren't in um, the Matthew C. So those were a couple of the things. Um, he was also doing the all about reading program and it was a lot of work. The lessons were really long and a lot of work. Um, and he would lose his attention span really quick and easy. So it was really hard to get a lesson completed. Um, I did see progress, but it wasn't near as fast as I was hoping. So we decided to switch that up for him too. So he pretty much is doing all new-ish stuff, um, especially in language arts. For both of the kids, we switched language arts and we found a new curriculum. Now he's been doing this curriculum for a couple weeks now. And my daughter has been doing it for a couple days because I ordered it and you actually get a PDF download of it before the books come. So I was able to start her on the program, but I actually got everything in the mail. So we are actually going forward from there. Um, so I can kind of talk to you a little bit of how we did it, but this is going to show you a little bit of an unboxing. And then I'm definitely going to do a more in-depth review on how we go do our school days with this curriculum um, as we keep going. The fact that both kids are doing the same brand is so exciting. And I know once my son gets to third grade, I'll switch him on to teaching textbooks because I think he'll do great with that. Um, but since they only do third grade, we're still trying to find something for his first, second, and third to get him, you know, or his first and second year to get him going. So, so far the alpha has been good. Like I said, it's teaching him a lot of the basics, but he definitely um, needs to still work on some of the other stuff. So let's get to it. Um, one of the things we ordered was the handwriting and this is the new one. I don't know if this is because it's level four or if this is their new way of packaging them or binding them, but if it is, I love this. So they have the coil here and this is a lot thicker cardboard, almost like a plastic, like a thick plastic. Um, it just feels in the back too, it feels a lot more sturdy than the last one. Again, I don't know if this is just because it's the four, level four or if this is their new way of doing it. I've looked through whoops, this lesson so far and it looks amazing. This is how the other ones are. This is, it's very, very like, it won't even stand up, right? So you definitely have to do this like on a desk. Um, you can't do it anywhere else, <laughs> but and it flips over, which is fine, especially for my son. This looks great. He likes it. He has really enjoyed it. Um, working with the letters and stuff, just really going through them. 
I'm seeing a huge improvement in his letters, like looking at them on here versus um, we were doing all about handwriting. And he just wasn't getting that excited about him because it was very like, it was just like draw the letter F over and over and over again or whatever it was, you know, and it was just like over and over and over again. Whereas this, they're going through, you write it one time and then, but then you're going to write it again the next day. Um, like here there's, they're having them write it a few, whoops, a few more times. And on this one, they're having them write it a few more times, but it's like you trace it once and then you write it once. Whereas the other one was. You traced it once and then you write it as many times as you could fit in there. So I like this because it kind of reminds me of, oh gosh, what is that? The handwriting without tears, how it has the box with the dot to show you where to start. So it kind of looks like a little bit of that, but makes it a little bit different. So I absolutely love this. Like I said, I've seen a huge difference for him. So that's exciting, but I definitely do like this new sturdier, thicker um, book. I think that's going to be awesome. And looking at hers, she does some assessment at the beginning. Um, there's quite a few pages of assessment in here. And then you actually get into the lessons. And I like it because it has the print. And then it's just introducing some of the handwriting. So this is the level four. Um, and I think this will be good too because she's wanting to learn cursive in a way, but not really quite all there yet. So this is nice. And I love the fact that they're doing a memory verse, like a Bible verse, and then they're getting some cursive in here. Um, and then she loves to do art. And so I love that they have this little spot for doing some kind of art project or like a picture or coloring. So it looks really good. Um, they also have them copy, do copy work of poems, which is great. So they're learning different poems, which is so important. And again, I believe um, we didn't get the level four language arts. We got the level three language arts. And again, they said this does not correlate with her school subject. I did the assessment test and this is where, like I said, I felt like she was, she was learning some stuff, but it really wasn't moving and she wasn't just like advancing the way I was hoping. Um, she loves to write, but she only likes to write what she likes to write about. And then I was watching and, and when she puts her mind to it, she can do amazing work. I've seen her write some great stories that I have a friend that is a teacher in um, seventh grade and she said her seventh grade, eighth grade kids don't write as nice. So it just kind of depends how she's feeling or what mood she's in. But at the same time, I want to find something that inspires her and makes her want to write. So that's what we've been looking for. So um, we bought the whole curriculum pre-printed. And this is the favorite classics. This is volume one, The Readers. And so, you know, these are some pretty hefty books as far as there's quite a few, there's quite a bit of writing in here. It's not just, um, you know, pictures, there's a lot of writing, but it's supposed to be at her level. Um, there is a book, um, and then there's poetry, and then it looks like a book, and then a poem, and then a book, and a poem, and it kind of goes back and forth. And what will happen is in your lesson, it will tell you when to read these books. And then she can also read them just for her free time reading, um, because that's always great too. And then they recommended getting this book, which I just ordered it through The Good and the Beautiful, because... It was cheaper there than on Amazon, um, a penny's worth of character. So she can read about this um, little girl and yeah, so I think it's a little girl. Maybe it's a little boy. <laughs> Maybe it's a little boy. But either way, she can read about that. Um, and then there is a second book, a second reader. Oh, see here again, they switched. So they must be switching it. So this has more of the cardboard and it has this like plasticky. And now this one is like a newer, waxier one with like this metal coil. So they must be switching out their binding. Um, and then again, this has a bunch of different books in here. So rather than having to buy, you know, and have a, a big old bookshelf full, you have these readers and you can just go through and read them. So we have volume one and volume two. And then we go into the language arts actual book and then the companion. So um, here's the level three course book. It's pretty big. It seems a lot bigger than his. <laughs> but um, the great thing about this curriculum is this, the good and the beautiful curriculum is it actually incorporates literature, grammar, use, grammar and uses, punctuation, art, geography, spelling, vocabulary, and writing. So we don't even necessarily need the extra writing, but at the same time, because they both need writing, you know, it works great. 
But this is like a complete curriculum. Like seriously, all we have to do is add science and math after we're done with this because it covers geography, art, and all of the language arts. So I love that. Um, it has spelling. It has, like I said, the grammar. It has literature. It has writing. It has vocabulary. It's amazing, guys. I've enjoyed it so much with my son, and I'm really looking forward to doing it with my daughter. I did read through how they suggest doing it um, for her grade as well as or for her level as well as for his and it's pretty much the same um they don't really I mean there's a little more work time but it's not a ton um theirs is maybe five minutes longer because they're older you know kids and stuff but it's not really that much more so what I love is each day you practice your spelling words and so like these are our challenging words list so I'll be cutting these up um, and she'll practice just how to spell these different words. These are some of the words like potion and position and portion. And some of those are really close, but you know, a little bit different. Um, so she's going to practice on how to re read those. And then you get the companion, um, course companion, which is going to go into the answer key, a quick reference, spelling dictations and poetry memorization. Um, and it just kind of goes through, it gives you your daily checklist, which this is the daily checklist guys. Like it's so not a lot. Okay. So on the daily checklist, it says read the, um, a good and the beautiful level three reader for at least 20 minutes. And it says, once you've finished the level three readers, volume one and two, read books from the good and beautiful, um, book list or any other worthy books. So for 20 minutes, you're going to do reading on your own. Wonderful. Right. Um, my son, obviously he's younger, so we do it together. And then you're going to practice your spelling words for five to 10 minutes. They have a lot of really great ideas on just keeping it fun, practicing your spelling words. And again, five to 10 minutes, not that big of a deal, right? Then you're going to practice your challenging word flashcards for about five minutes. So then we're going to go through practicing our flashcards for about five minutes. What I'll probably do is have her go over them. And like, again, and just kind of like practice and quiz herself while I work on my son with my son on his flashcards. And then we'll like, you know, I'll practice and quiz her on these. Or we might just do start off with writing and spelling together, which is probably what we're going to end up doing. And then as they go into practicing and into the actual course book, um, one will do math and then we'll switch so I can be with them each while they do their language arts lesson because it's really not that long, but they do need help. So if you're going to do your word flashcards for five minutes and then you're going to complete 30 to 45 minutes in the course book and then you work on poetry one to two times a week. So it's not a lot. If you're looking at that, you know, if you're doing the top time, you're looking at 45, 50, 60, 70, 80 minutes, not even an hour and a half. Okay. That is really good because they actually say you don't need to practice the spelling words every single day. They say that you could do that every couple days. Um, but I think it's a great idea to do it every day. So we'll try it. We'll see how it goes. Um, either way, what we're going to do is each kid will pull out their handwriting notebooks and they will go ahead and start practicing their handwritings while I read our daily devotions. And then what I plan to do is get both of their spelling word lists, which are in the books. Um, as you come along, so like we did, oh, is it in the course companion? I can't remember where I see that saw the spelling word. Yes. So in the course companion, there's a spelling word list. And here's like chart one and it gives you it. So all I have to do is take this and I actually made a copy of it so I can just put, it'll be super simple. I can make a copy of my son's or, you know, print out a copy of my son's, print out a copy of my daughter's, put it in a little um, sleeve protector, page protector. And then what I want to do is go ahead and quiz them on it. So I have both of their lists. And what we're going to do is we're going to do some days we'll do like red light, green light. If you get the word right, you get to come step forward. If you don't, you go back. We'll do balloon bop where they have to bop the balloon while they're spelling the words with each word letter. Um, you can, we'll go out in the driveway. They can write them with chalk, you know, get whiteboards and do it with whiteboards. We have different ways we can do it. And that's what I love is we can just make it a variety, but we can do it together because I'll just say, okay, I, you know, Isaiah, your spelling word is blah, blah, blah. You know, and then he'll work on spelling that. Mika, your spelling word is blah, blah, blah. And then she can work on that and they can do it together. So it will be really fun, I think. And the fact that we can kind of work on it together is going to be really awesome. Um, so that's the plan is we're going to do handwriting. We're going to do spelling together. Like I said, for her, her challenging words and his um, flashcards, we will probably split up after spelling and she'll go to math, her math teaching textbooks while I work with him. And then when she finishes math, I'll work with her and he'll start his math. So that's the plan at least. 
and I'll be sure to do a video on our schedule, you know, once we kind of have done this for a while. My son and I have been doing it for a while, and my daughter and I, uh, my daughter kind of jumped in last week for a couple of days, but she hasn't done it for like a whole week. So once we've done it for a little while, we'll be sure to come back and let you guys know. So um, then you have your actual course book which has beautiful art in it because we're learning about art. So like on this first one, um, she had to read a story and she got assessed on the story. Um, and it, it was teaching about commas and where you put in commas. And then we wrote, you know, some sentences and she had to insert the commas for the sentences. She practiced reading with um, some poems. She had to read, select two of the poems and read them. Um, and then there's also poetry memorization. So they both have poems to memorize. So that was it. And then there was talking about the picture. She looked at the picture and then she had to write some sentences using nouns because we were learning about nouns as well and listing them using commas. So things you see in the picture that you could list with commas. So it's really cool because you get a look at this. And when we do this, we also talk about, um, so we give a little art lesson, you know, around 115 years ago, long before you were born, a German artist named Arnold Leungren created this beautiful painting. Art can be can help us feel the wonders of this beautiful world God created for us. Let us look at some details of the painting. And then it says, like in this color, it's in blue is when you read it, the instructions versus say it. Um, observe and discuss the painting. So you can be like, you know, it looks like a beautiful, like, village, you know, with this beautiful, you know, boat and kind of go into talking about it, you know, and, and how the sky looks or the trees. And you think it was springtime with the flowers blooming and, you know, kind of going into the different things and talking about it. So it gives you a little art lesson. Um... And then it says make a list on the board of seven different nouns that they see in the painting. Have the children write the nouns in alphabetical order. Then have the children write two or three sentences using the nouns um, in a series. For an example, I see cows, horses, or houses, and clouds. I like the field, sky, and hills. And make sure they um, use the appropriate commas. And then you got to read, read through there. So it's a really quick lesson. It took us all of maybe 10, 15 minutes to get through this lesson one. Now, um, because we went through pretty quick, I could actually keep going, um, but we didn't. We finished the worksheet. She did her work and we actually had other stuff we had to do that day. So that was kind of the end of it. But um, it really is awesome. And then here's lesson two. We're going to talk about silent ease. So um, you go through and you just make sure you get, you know, all of them done and even though this is all stuff that she's learned before, I feel like it hasn't quite sunk in because we've been kind of trying to find a curriculum that really clicks with her. And it seems like this is going to be the one that's going to work for us. I am super excited because finding the right curriculum is so hard. If you're a homeschool mom, I'm sure you'll get this. I'm sure you're watching these videos trying to decide what curriculum is going to be right for you. Um, I wish I would have known about this sooner because it's absolutely amazing. Um, like I said, we'll actually get into the geography part. There's, I think some geography cards in here as well. I haven't opened the packet, but there should be some geography cards and it will start leading us into geography. We have our space board up here with our space that we're going to start learning, um, different things about. And again, that can be taught together because the way they write it, it's all taught together. So, um, our plan is to do geography and American history two days a week. Um, or one day a week, and then do science two days a week, and then do um, poetry two days a week. So that will be our week for us. And yeah, so that is my um, unboxing and my kind of review about it. Like I said, I'll be sure to go into more details as we keep going and to share with you guys how this has worked for us um, and how we work it in our daily schedule. So if you guys are interested in any more information about this curriculum, you can go to the website, The Good and the Beautiful, um, and check it out. They have so much amazing curriculum, not only already there, but coming up. It's They have their math starting. It's too late, I think, for my son because they're only getting first grade next year, and we need second grade, and that's not until the following year because they're just starting to write the curriculum. Because But I was looking at the first grade one, and I was like, oh, I love it, I love it, I love it. If they were going to have second grade next year, I would have started him on it, but because they won't have second grade next year when he needs second grade, I didn't want to switch. So we're going to stay, stick it out with the math you see. Um, and I've been researching other ones. If you guys have a good math program for my, um, a, son, a, a boy who's very, he has a very short attention span, <laughs> gets bored very easily, but loves like Minecraft and that kind of stuff. We did get the Minecraft math book. So he kind of has been playing in there um, and he enjoys that one, but it doesn't necessarily teach him a lesson. And that's where I'm trying to find ones that help teach him a lesson because I'm not always the best at 
putting it into words. So, <laughs> all right, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you guys have a beautiful, blessed day. If you enjoy these videos, give them a thumbs up. If you guys, like I said, have any questions about this curriculum, you can go to the website or you can go ahead and ask me and I can try to answer them as best I can. If you want to see um, a video on our schedule, our daily schedule on how we actually work this out and how we go about doing this, be sure to comment and let me know below. Um, again, if you guys have any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching. Have a beautiful, blessed day.